create it, but we help you document it and think about it and put a plan together to actually accomplish your vision. And perhaps Cliff will give us some more information today uh, on how we can help that. So what uh, what I what I have to read, uh, since I've never met Clifton, I've never had the pleasure, Clifton Johnson is a seasoned professional with over 30 years of experience in organizational development, accounting, and executive leadership. <coughs> All the things you might want to know if you're going to try to fulfill a business vision. He, he achieves success through the collaborative efforts of people, balancing results, process, and relationships. Clifton is a community servant, inspiring people to thrive in every area of their lives. He's passionately involved with the Empower series, which I hope to hear about because I've never heard of that one before. Uh, it's a nonprofit organization that promotes free financial literacy and self-development workshops for students and adults. And please join with me in welcoming Clifton Johnson. Thank you. Please pass your dollars forward. You already got it. Okay, this is a video about the Empower series. I like opening up with my vision. So let's put it in like that. In the volume. Volume. Put some volume. It's step after step after step. Now, no one may change, but the rules for you may be previously ruled for somebody else. And as these rules evolve, hence, the ever-changing game. And it just inspired me to make changes in my life, and it also inspired me to continue to mentor people that are younger than me. You don't have a collaboration board, you lose it. Where I've been does not define me, but where I'm going is based on my definition. You learn so much, so much knowledge, because you're gonna walk away a different person. How do you find your purpose? Like I said, what comes easy for you? That's one. Two, what's in your hand? What do you have at your disposal that you can use that would say, this is what you want me to do? I love the Empower series. Everybody needs to be here every third Saturday of the month because this is amazing. You're going to leave inspired and wanting to do more with your life. That is so inspiring, isn't it? <laughs> So thank you, thank you very much, thank you for being here, and thank you, David. I will tell you that I feel so fortunate and blessed to be a part of this community. I am very much inspired by some, by when I meet people who are passionately pursuing their purpose, and their purpose is around enriching and empowering other people. I'm a big guy, but I get kind of emotional when I talk about things, so I'm just letting you know if you feel me, my voice quiver, I'm you know, my well enough, you know, I'm just like, I'm not ashamed to show emotion. But I want to thank you so much, David, because um, and I, when I tell you more about my background, then you'll have a better sense, you can help me understand what happened in my background that makes me so emotional. But I really do believe that we're put here in this world to be of service to other people. And, and when I meet people who are pursuing their passion, and it's about enriching other people's lives, empowering them, I am all in. So I want to thank you for, number one, making a difference. I want to thank you, number two, for making a difference with other people who want to make a difference. And I want to thank you so much for making a difference with other people who want to make a difference, doing something of significance. And the fourth thing is making a difference with other people who want to make a difference, doing something of significance at a time where it makes all the difference in the world. So thank you. I am blessed. And I am going to empower you, inspire you. And I, I'm going to do that by simply sharing some ideas. And we all have ideas, right? I believe that we are idea stewards. We are given ideas. And how many times have we, I know I've given, I have so many different ideas when I wake up. And some of them I act on, some of them I don't. And I always look at when I see somebody else doing something that I thought about. I go, man, that was my idea. 
Have you got? Has anybody ever thought about that? Of course. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, I want, I want to. I want to squash that idea right now, because nobody else can work on your idea. That's right. Mm-hmm. Nobody else has your ideas. You have them. And I believe that we talk about money, we talk about all this other material stuff, but the most precious resource we have, the second most precious resource is time, but the most precious resource is an idea that you have because it's yours. And I am encouraging everyone to be better idea stewards. How does that sound? You ever heard of it? Take some notes. This is, you know, some wisdom's gonna come out. I'm gonna be in flow, and you it's just gotta video. capture it. Oh my gosh! It's there. They can come back. Yeah, I, I do that. For, I do that for other people. <laughs> I do that for other people. So again, I want to thank you for allowing me to be here with you. I can get going. So I'm gonna be very brief. There's three things I'm gonna cover. So I'm gonna tell you what those are now, to, so that you can help me stay on point. I'll let you know when you got ten minutes. Okay, cool. Why don't you let me know? Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Okay, that'll keep me on pace, right? So here's what I want you to do. I want you to write this down. The three things we're going to cover today. Number one, I'm going to talk about what do you see. Number two, I'm going to talk about what do you hear. And number three, I'm going to talk about who are you around. What do you see? What do you hear? And who are you around? So what is that? S H A. C here around. Little things to help you remember what I'm going to talk about today. I don't like talking about history. History is the past. History is the past. It is gone. However, were you? Pardon me. I'm a retired history teacher. So. <laughs> oh, but, 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 but listen, there's value in history because you learn from it. Yeah. So I just don't like, I don't like defining people by their history. Uh, because the future, mm-hmm. thank you for correcting me on that, the future is in front of you. The future is your vision, your dream. You know, the, the future belongs to those who are courageous enough to take action on their dreams. So that's what I like talking to you about. You're gonna, I'm going to talk about my history. I got a letter here I'm going to read to you to let you know where I'm coming from. But it's only to let you know where I'm coming from and to help you understand why it is propelling my vision, why I'm here today, mm-hmm. and why I'm going to share with you how you have a vision and a dream that is worth you taking some sense of action on. The Empower series says action, ideas in action. An idea is worthless if you're not going to take some kind of action on it. And I believe that all of us have all of the resources to take one step towards our dream and achieving our vision. It doesn't take money, it doesn't take anything that you're thinking you don't have, because you have all the resources around you. You're gonna hear from me, but what's most important about why you're here is to meet the person that's sitting here to get to know them, understand them, and what you can, how you can pour into them. Because we, we should all be better angel watchers. Why don't you write that down? We should all be better angel watchers. No one can accomplish anything alone. Anything of significance has always been accomplished by people collaborating and working together. And so we need to become better angel watchers because there are angels all around us that can help us manifest our ideas and our vision, our dreams, our goals. But not only that, you are an angel. So you are somebody else's angel. And unless you are out there being a watcher and looking at how you can point people's lives, you're gonna miss opportunities. So as I share with you the three topics that I'm gonna talk about today, of what do you see, what do you hear, and who are you around, I want you to think about how you can be a better steward of your ideas, be better angel watchers, and realize that you are all angels. So my background, I'm from Los Angeles, California, Southern California, how many people have seen Boys in the Hood? That a few people have. So that was my neighborhood. That was my neighborhood where I was raised. I won't spend a lot of time into that, but I got some very interesting stories. However, I would tell you that I have always been a dreamer. I used to love going to bed because I can go dream. Now my dream to tell you was I, I played football. I used to dream about winning touchdowns, winning the Heisman Trophy, doing all those great things, getting the scholarship to go to college, getting playing football, breaking all kinds of records, making starting businesses, and then going back to LA and being a beach bum. That being a wealthy beach bum, that was me. That was I, it, you couldn't talk me out of that vision. So that's I saw that every day. So I did not see. I saw the crime. I saw the the people dying. I saw you know, helicopter lights in my backyard. 
I saw all of that stuff. I was even threatened to be killed. I, a whole bunch of drama happened in my world, but all I saw was my vision and my dream to do something with my life. I didn't really realize it. When I went away to college, I had several offers. Academic offers as well as athletic offers. I was accepted to Stanford University, UCLA, USC, uh, University of Hawaii. That's a whole other story, I'll tell you about that. I decided to go to the University of Washington. When I went to the University of Washington, my dream was crushed. I had the opportunity of, of being a, a freshman starter and achieving my goals, and then I injured myself, and I hurt my knee. And I'm going to share with you the importance of family to me. My brother wrote me a letter. I was telling him, I'm going to share his story with you so you can see the, the purpose of vision and how wherever you are today is not really your reality. It's what your vision is. But the importance of this letter is, is who he was to me when I was a sophomore in high school, realizing that my dream of being a football star was crushed. He sent me a letter saying, Dear Clifton, how are you doing? I am writing you so that you know how much I care about you. I know you are doing a lot of thinking right now about your future. I have faith in you, and I want you to know that I stand behind you 100. You are very dear to me, and your pain is felt by me and hurts very deep. I know you will overcome any obstacles that stand in your way. Strength and love always, your loving brother, Tyro. So that, my, my big brother's my big brother. He, he, he was the first one out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so he was, he was the, the training tools for my, my, my parents, who were great parents. My father was a clerk in the post office. He actually went to, went to work in a, he wasn't a suit and tie, but he was business casual. But he had two jobs. He worked at the post office at, um, at some weird hour early in the morning, but he also worked for 12 years as a janitor at the LA Independent School District. So he had two jobs, one car, and I remember going one time to give him dinner with my mom and he was, he was sleeping on the job. He was just a hardworking man, but he paid for three of us to attend private school at that time. I didn't know it was private school. I didn't know it was, you had to pay for it. You know, I'm a kid. However, I knew he worked hard, and my mom was the fire of our family. She was the fire in the rock. She could talk about anything. She was very artistic, and she was very involved in the community. In our neighborhood, she had the Madden Avenue Club, where we had kids running around the block. She was doing sit-ups and push-ups. She was just very involved in kick and pointing to children. And then my sister was just love. I, I, I was very protective of her. Every guy who broke her heart, she would just love again. And I, it taught me at that point that the strength in a person is truly in the ability to love. To love no matter what happens to you. No matter what the hurt is, if you can step back into that relationship and open your heart and love, that's true strength. And that's what my, my sister taught me. I tell you all of those things because fast forwarding in 1988 when my father died and I went home, I saw my brother falling asleep at my father's services. And I was like, what's up? Come to find out, when he got the insurance money, he was gone. Do you guys know what a strawberry is? Some of you do, right? So a strawberry is that woman who hangs out with the guy who is hooked on crack, and they're just out in the street. Oh, geez, never heard of that. So in from 1988 to 1994, I had an experience with my brother to where I didn't know if I was ever going to see him again. I used to see him every now and then. I won't bore you. I only got like 30 minutes. <laughs> However, through that period of time, I just didn't know. So my brother, who was my rock, was going through his point in his life where I didn't know if I was going to hear him again alive. In 1994, I got a call and he was in the hospital. Flew down from Seattle to see him, stayed with him for a week, was in intensive care, in a coma. When I had to go back to work, he was coming out. So we stayed in touch and came back there and out. If I could show you some pictures, I hold on to him. I, I'm not gonna show you pictures now, but I got permission to share with you his, his story. He was sitting in the bed as thin as a, as a toothpick and he said, hey, I, I wanna go to Dallas and I want to, um, I want, I want to go ahead and get married and have kids. <laughs> I'm thinking, bro, we gotta get you out of the hospital first. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but that was his vision. Are you with me here? Mm -hmm. the connection? That was his vision. I got him, at that point I was in Dallas actually, I got him out of the hospital, he came to Dallas, went to the Salvation Army program of Harry Hines, went to that program, and everybody was telling me that there was something about him. 
Every you, you know, if you, if you have anybody in your family that has been addicted to any kind of substance, they know that the recovery rate is not that successful. And but they said there's just something about Tower. There's something about in his spirit. We feel that he's going to make it. He came out of that program and went to Waco. And in Waco, he went through this house program. I think his I forget what it was called. But we, I visited him. I saw him around. Found his himself a wife. Got married. And when they came to Dallas and said, hey, you know, we're engaged to get married, my response was, hmm, that's interesting. <laughs> I still didn't see it, but he got married. They adopted two young children that looked like it came from them. <laughs> they came, they both beautiful, a daughter and a son. Today, the daughter is a sophomore at University of North Texas. And the son is graduating from high school. He's a football star, but he's go he's been accepted to the University of North Texas, and so they will be going to school together next year. So that is my yeah, give it up. Right? So why do I tell you that story? At any point in time, if you were to take a snapshot picture of where he was in his life, you would never see the future. But he did. When he was telling me that he wanted to get married and have kids, I was like, dude, come on. Let's just get you out of the hospital. But he believed in his vision regardless of where he was. And I can, can anybody relate to that? Yeah. Have you ever been at a point in your life where the surroundings around you had nothing to do with where you wanted to be, but all you had was this vision inside of you? Yeah, it happens, right? We're, we're all in the same boat. And so the first thing I want to tell you is that what you have to believe in, truly believe in, is this vision that you see of what you want. Whether it's me being a young kid in a crime-infested neighborhood and me being able to run, score touchdowns and go to college, or whether it's my brother you know, being in the hospital bed almost dying and then saying that he wants to move someplace and get married. No matter what it is, I can tell you countless of stories, and you have countless of stories too. So from this one point, I want to share with you that no matter where you are in your life, we all have different phases, and I'm going to pass something out for you too. Pass it down. So some of you may have seen this because I know that you've been to different workshops where you have. You'll we'll get one for you. But this is called your will of life. How many people have seen something like this before? How many people have filled one out before? So, so when's the last time, if you raised your hand, when's the last time you had one filled out? A year ago? A year ago? How, how about you? Uh, David, when did you give the presentation? <laughs> <laughs> two years ago. Two years well, ago. Actually, we do a version of this in the vision challenge too with uh, your, your, yeah, so yeah, it's, it's, I break it down into six. Now. So how often do you suggest you do, you do the vision challenge? Um, as often as you, every time you come to the question of am I where I want to be, do I want to go forward to revisit it? That's why it's free, because you can do it as many times as you want. Yeah, and I would encourage you to become, look at this periodically at least once a year more often if you want to make sure that you're not drifting. Right. So for me, I know I drift sometimes. <laughs> well, the more you look at where you are and you assess where are you in different areas of your life, you get a barometer to say, okay, where am I? And, and you are never going to be perfect. The example in the top right-hand corner, yeah, the way this works is in the center is zero, and on the outer edges is 10. So wherever you are in these categories, if you feel like you're not even you know, getting out of bed, in the area of, significant, of making a significant impact in others or your family or your health or your money, your career, you're more in the center. But if you feel like you're progressing, you're achieving your goal, you're moving more towards the 10. So I would encourage you to take time now in whatever area you have in your life to just say, where am I? And once you put the dots on each one of those spokes, then connect the spokes, connect the dots, and you'll see something as an example in the top right-hand corner. The first thing is an awareness of where you are. Where do you self-assess yourself? This might be also interesting if you give it to your significant other. Or give it to other people and say, hey, you know, how do you see me in this area of my life? How many people have some kind of mentor or coach that you deal with on a regular basis that holds you accountable? Definitely. So if you there are some extra copies if you would like, but I would encourage you to number one, how do you see yourself today 
in these different areas of your life. So I want you to, I want to give you a minute to pick, to do this, and I want to ask you to take one. I want to go through an exercise with you. So pick one of these areas, take the time right now. I'll give you 30 seconds to do so, because you don't need more than 30. Pick one, measure where you are, and then I'll let you know where we're running over So here's what I'd like you to do. I want you to follow me with this. So wherever you are, I want you to I want you to think about one of these areas that you want to see some progress in this year. So 12 months from now, you want to be in a different spot. Okay? So once you have that area, I want you to take a look up here. And I'm going to ask you to do something. So you see Empower Cities. I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. I'll keep my eyes open for now, just make sure we're all safe. <laughs> so make sure we're not cheating. Right? Would you close your eyes, and when your eyes are closed, I want you to say to yourself without moving your mouth, I want you to say Empower Series. On the count of three, I'm going to do this. Right? So you're going to say Empower Series without moving your mouth, but your eyes are going to be closed when you do that. So go ahead and close your eyes now. One, two, three. Okay, open your eyes. So I heard some of you. <laughs> but for those for, for those of you who said that, who participated, did you hear yourself say Empower Series? Okay, so you heard yourself say it. When you said it, if you, if you think about it, you also, did you see Empower Series in your mind's eye when your eyes were closed? Did you see that as well? So here's my question for you. Who was that? Because you actually said, you, you said Empower Series, and you heard yourself say Empower Series, but you didn't move your mouth at all. So who was that? Still us. Still me. Right, right. You know? but, but then also, you heard it, but there was no vibration. So that kind of asks you the question, what is the sound? Not only did you hear it, but you also saw it. And sometimes you can see this sometimes better with your eyes closed. So what is, what is vision? What is sight? What is the kind of sight that allows you not only to see something with your eyes closed, but to also see your past as well as your future? What kind of sight is that? Those are some deep questions. Some people who are scientists might be able to give you some answers to it. But at the end of the day, I say that there is something within all of us call it whatever it is, your being or whatever it is that exists prior to this outside manifestation of this physical world. So it must be insight. Insight, something within. So it's something that's inside that comes out. You've heard of the term inside out. Like you, you live your life inside out. But we spend so much time taking care of our physical bodies. We're all, we're eating here. You woke up this morning, you hopefully you, you know, washed up your outside body, got clean a little bit. Uh, brush your teeth, maybe have something to eat to give you some nourishment, and you got out. So you, took, you take a lot of time taking care of your physical and external body. But this internal stuff, your internal vision, your internal self-talk, your internal self-talk, what is it that you hear? 
What is it that you see with your eyes closed? What is it that you hear when your mouth is not moving, but you're talking to yourself? There's something going on inside of all of us. Would you agree to that? Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's empowering, but then how many of us, I know with me, I would wake up in the morning and just feel like, oh, man, I don't feel like getting up today. Mm -hmm. I know I didn't want to work out, but let me go ahead and snooze button a little bit more. And then when I get to work, I'm taking a tollway from downtown. I'm like hitting the rush hour traffic. I'm like, why am I paying to wait? Why am I paying to wait? <laughs> I don't get that. And then I get to work, and then I have my schedule all lined up, but then something happens, I get called into meetings. It's like, how am I going to get my work done if I'm in a meeting? It's like everything that's happened to me just starts off on the wrong side. But then there's some days where I wake up on the other side of the bed, and I feel this sense of gratitude, this appreciation for being in this world. And I'm talking to somebody, I'm looking at, uh, I want you to write this down, www.greatday.com www.greatday.com I would look at that, do some meditation, my reading, and then I'm going, I'm in the same traffic on the tollway, but it's not bothering me. And then I get to work, ready to go, hit it to win it, then I get caught in on meetings, I'm in a meeting, I'm thinking, how can I contribute? How can I make a difference? What can I share? And so, I, so my, my schedule is uncontrollable, but I'm still going through with a different set of expectations and insight. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Have you ever experienced something like that as well? Mm -hmm. so, so what is that? When the external things that happen to you are the same, but yet your interpretation of the way you see it, how you envision it, and what you self-talk to yourself is so different. What do you do? Okay, I, this is going to be some feedback. This is where I'm halfway through, right? Halfway? No, oh, you're really got four minutes. Four minutes? Really? Okay, so good. I'm about to wrap this up. So, so <laughs> thank you. So, so here's what I would tell you. If you've experienced those, what do you do? What do you do to overcome that? Positive thoughts. Positive thoughts. Focus on where I'm going. Focus on where you're going, your vision. Just ignore it. You ignore it. You just got to shut it out. Shut it out. So you all have your way of dealing with that. But I tell you, you're dealing with that from the inside. Mm -hmm. you, you have a way of being that number one, if you are aware of, you have the opportunity to shift. Because it's all how you see yourself, regardless of your circumstances. It's all what you say to yourself. You know, what you say can empower you. And then once you say the right things to yourself, whether it's positive affirmations, you know, this is going to be a great day, yeah, I'm going to be great, it's going to be fantastic, I'm going to work out, I'm going to have energy, whatever that might be, if you start with that internally, then when you speak, it has power. It has power. Okay? And I will tell you that since we're all the same, well, well I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this. Uh, this is the last thing I'm going to share with you. So we talked about what do you see? We've talked about what do you hear? And the last thing I want to end with is who are you around? So who do you surround yourself with? Do you surround yourself with people who are inspiring you, who are encouraging you to, stand, to take action on your dreams? Or are you talking to people who are sometimes disempowering you? So where you feel like, oh man, I can't really, you know, then I, I'm, I'm just sucking my energy away. So, so how many of us can think of people right now that we're spending time with <laughs> that are sucking our energy away? Raise your hand. I don't spend time with those people. Okay, so some of us are good. So you have boundaries, yeah, right. your boundaries. So I would tell you, if you've raised your hand, you should always go through an inventory of people around you. Inventory of people around hard. you. Pardon me? It happens hard in family. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Married to yeah. That's true. Yeah. 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 So you might be locked in. So I want to share with you a couple of stories as, as we wrap. And I want you to see how this may apply to you. So the number one, let's talk about family. Um, you might have family around you right now. You might need to look deep if they're not your immediate family. That can be very empowering to you. For the past 33 years, or since 1984, I've been attending the, the NCAA <coughs> Final Four basketball tournaments, wherever it goes. How many people are familiar with basketball, college basketball, March Madness? So I've been attending those with my uncle, my aunt, and my cousins. No matter where it is, I'm there having fun. For the past two years, last year and this year, my uncle and I are not going because they're in their 80s and they're being to slow down. In 2011, 
I started realizing, I started thinking, okay, what is this all about? Why am I going? And I did some research on my uncle. So I found out in deeper meaning, I always, I always knew his title, but this is what I found out about my uncle. He is the first African-American president of the National Collegiate Athletic Association. Whoa. He also, if you, if you Google this on, on YouTube, is, his name is Dr. James Frank. Dr. James Frank, NCAA. I've been spending time with my uncle for years when I was a kid, going to his house. You know, he lived in different places. He was the president of Lincoln University. He served on so many different committees with the NCAA. He's made some significant contributions to that organization that the organization is benefiting from today. I'm actually still going to the Final Four because of him to do some other things. But what I did not realize was the significance of what he has done. So in your family, you may have someone that you can associate with and learn from. Now, I want you to write this down. There's three networks you should have. The first one is what's called your personal network. So write this down, your personal network. This is what I'm closing with. Your personal network is your circle of friends, family, people who inspire you, who uplift you, who love you, who pour on you, like my brother, no matter what. That's your personal network. You should identify who's in your personal network. Your second network should be your operational network. And those are people who help you get things done. So it could be people here, people in your job, people in your church, your organization, your nonprofit, that help you get tactical things done. Your team, that's your operational network. The last network you should have should be your strategic network. Your strategic network are people who are doing things greater than you. They are beyond your vision. You're thinking, when I grow up, I'm going to be like you. They pull you, they stretch you, they make you cry sometimes. <laughs> They're, those are the people that you want to strategically align yourself with. So this morning I had a call with, with an entrepreneur who called and poured into me this morning. He's dealing with some things, but he's a good friend of mine. He's actually the person who franchised Wingstop. So the person who started Wingstop was Antonio Swab. He had the formula, but he knew nothing about business, so he partnered with Calvin Golden, who actually franchise, created the franchise model, trained it, so the first 13 here in Dallas owned several of them, and the story continues with equity buyouts and everything. So he's doing very well. He has a few now. He's a big developer in downtown in Dallas. So he called me this morning, and we poured into each other. Uh, the last one I'll share with you as I wrap this up is Dr. Dennis Kimbrough. How many people have heard of the book, Think and Grow Rich? A black, uh, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Right. Okay. Have you heard of Dr. Dennis Kimbrough, though? Okay, so I'm going to share with you his story. Are my books back there? Yes. Okay, why don't you grab the books, and this is how I'm going to wrap and leave you with. So Dr. Dennis Kimbrough, well, Napoleon Hill passed away in 1970. And uh, he died of a stroke. But the Think and Grow Rich book was a phenomenal success. Think and Grow Rich, he interviewed successful people back in the 1920s and 30s, published this book, and it has transformed many lives, lives of people who, are not, who weren't even born back then and still are going to continue who are not born today. So when he died in 1970, he was in the process of interviewing African Americans. How many people knew that? Okay, a few. So he was interviewing African Americans, he wrote like 100 pages, and then he died. The Napoleon Hill Foundation, which is run by, at that time, um, W. Clement Stones, a successful insurance person, those of you who are insurance should know about that, held onto that manuscript for 20 years. And then when Dr. Dennis Kimbrough was graduating from Northwestern, he was writing a book called What Makes the Great Great. He was going around the world interviewing African Americans about to write a book about what are the keys to success. Then. W. Clinton Stones called him in and said, hey, fly in, I want to talk to you about finishing this manuscript that Napoleon Hill has started. So he said, you're not the first man who went around the world interviewing black successful people. Napoleon Hill was doing that before he died. So we want you to finish his manuscript. And he said, no, nah, man, I'm doing my own book. Come on, I'm good. I want to do with that. And eventually he said, well, if you, you, know, if you had any sense, you would rethink it. And so he rethunk it. <laughs> And he came up with this book called Think and Grow Rich, A Black Choice. So here's the most, here's the better copy, but here's the one that I read when I was just graduating from college. 
and you can see it's been through some things. So when I have my idea of starting the Empower series, I wanted to think about who could come in and actually kick off the Empower series and make it work. My closing video is going to be up. So, okay. so I, I talked to, I reached out and I called Dennis Kimbrell. So you all have people that you want to reach out to who are doing things at a great level, and I would say reach out to them. Reach out to them no matter what they, who they are. I can tell you many different stories, but this is the last story I'm closing with. So with Dennis Kimbrough, I called him and I said, hey, I have this idea and I want to kick off in our community, which is underserved, and have national people come in, local people come in and pour into the community and let them know that whatever they think of, they can achieve. And so he came in 2011, I'll find it real quick. So in 2011, he came to kick off the Empower Series. And that's the last image I'm gonna share with you here. To let you know that all things are possible. He came and spoke at SMU. Never where you want it to be, right? <laughs> a career is what you're paid for, but a calling. So, this is my closing video. I want to thank you all, though, for being attentive, for taking notes. I've shared some ideas with you that if you take action on, will take your life to a different place. This is not the end. I would ask you to stay connected. You know my social media, Empower Series. I'll give you my phone number, you can stay connected with me. And what I'm looking forward to is how our connection, how me getting to know you, can really enrich the lives of other people. So I want you to look at this video. This is how the vision of the Empower Series started for me. I have been blessed to meet many, many different people. And I am very, very fortunate and grateful, David, that you've given me the opportunity to talk to you. Okay. So listen to this in my closing. what you're made for. Looking forward to the event tonight. Looking forward to meeting a lot of people. Hi, I'm Pat Fabian. I'm president of Comerica's Texas division. Uh, it's my privilege tonight to uh, be here to introduce our speaker, uh, Dr. Dennis Kimbrough. My research on him shows that he's going to be a great speaker with a great message. The reason why you're here, because you need to meet the person seated in front of you, behind you, to your left and your right. Networking is a critical skill. We are so excited to be here this evening as part of the larger group. Uh, the reason that we're here is we are an affinity group with the other organizations here that work together collaboratively to bring Dr. Cambro in. And we're just excited with the phenomenal turnout that we have this evening. I thought the presentation was fantastic. He certainly touched upon points that all of us need to hear. People will never remember what you said. They will never remember what you did. But they will never forget how you made them feel. And I just think it's a great organization. Everyone should want to come and be a part of it. If you want to get knowledge to be empowered and to be able to excel in the profession that you're in, we can help you get there. And I met a lot of people and I had a lot of fun. And so I love to come to this event. And I think this event is a wonderful event. I've heard Dr. Kimbrough before, and he's been our guest speaker uh, at our convention, and I look forward to uh, hearing him again this evening. And I was actually invited by the Black MBA Association uh, to come and, and share my vision with them and what I'm doing in the community to help better children uh, that are living with HIV AIDS and just disadvantaged children, period, that are struggling with obesity. I just want to say that we were fortunate to have Dr. Kimball come in and ignite us with um, the passion to hold on to our dreams and realizing that any idea, any worthy idea, is going to manifest itself as long as we stay focused on it because we ultimately become our most dominant thought. Any problem. Any problem can be solved if only enough people can. Any problem if only enough people can. Sure. Dallas, Black MBAs, we're going to change this paradigm. Sure. We're going to make a difference because we can.